This is the story of Francisco Masiangwema, who is by far the worst and craziest dictator Africa has ever seen. When the story of African dictators is told, you will hear of names such as Sani Abacha of Nigeria, Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, and Idi Amin of Uganda. But all these men are not half as evil and dictatorial as Nguema. He makes them look like amateur dictators. This man was in power from 1968 when Equatorial Guinea gained independence to 1979 when he was overthrown and killed. But in the 11 years he was in charge, he changed the lives of his people in a way not many evil men can. He killed so many, destroyed the nation's economy, and at a point claimed to be God. To be fair to Nguema, his life was a tragedy since he was a boy. Some aspects of his story claimed that his father, who was a witch doctor, killed one of his brothers for ritual purpose. There are also claims that when Francisco was only nine years old, his father was punched to death right in his presence by a local administrator. He became an orphan only a week later when his mom committed suicide. In this video, you will find out about the man, Francisco Masiangwema, who is arguably the worst dictator that Africa has ever seen. Watch it to the end to see how his nephew had to step in and overthrow him because of his unhinged evil. Born Mazem Nguema as a member of the Fang ethnic group, he was left together with his nine siblings to fend for themselves after the death of his mother. He was a very gentle and rather cunny man, but was not one of the most intelligent men one would meet. He failed the civil service exams at least three times, but somehow he still managed to rise into becoming a mayor under the Spanish colonial government. His rise continued and a few years later, Nguema became a member of the territorial parliament. Next, he became a deputy prime minister and when Equatorial Guinea gained its independence in 1968, he was elected the country's president. He defeated Prime Minister Ondo Edu to win the election. While Ondo was the more qualified of the two candidates, Nguema was the one who had mastered telling people what they wanted to hear. He did just that and became the first president of Equatorial Guinea. As the flag of Spain was falling and that of an independent Equatorial Guinea was rising, the country was in a joyful mood, not knowing they had installed a man who could best be described as a psychopath in charge of their future. As soon as Francisco became leader, it was reported that he executed his first political rival, Ondo Edu. Edu initially fled the country in exile after the election, but he later returned before he was allegedly killed on false charges that the former prime minister was planning to carry out a coup. The official report of the death of Ondo was that he committed suicide. For those who were doubting the depth of trouble, the country was into it in Nguema. The man cleared their doubts when he set aside the constitution and gave himself all powers. This meant he had all the say in the small nation and could do all he wanted. That was exactly what he did. He abolished all political parties except his own party, the United National Party, in order to make himself president for life. Francisco Masia Nguema had a strong hatred for people who were intelligent and could talk about different topics. He marked them as public enemies for polluting the culture of his country with Western ideas. He banned the use of spectacles, and anyone who defied this law was put to death. It was also criminal to use the word intellectual in Equatorial Guinea, and you could spend 30 years in prison for it. As he did all these, he gave himself the nickname Unique Miracle and Grand Master of Education, Science and Culture. 
This happened around the time when Uganda's Idi Amin gave himself the official title, His Excellency, President for Life, Field Marshal al Haj Dr. Idi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the seas, and conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular. Back to Francisco Masiam Gwema. The man destroyed all roads leading out of his country, as well as ships and boats. He wanted everyone to remain in the country and have a first-hand experience of his government. By the mid-1970s, his distrust had graduated from just the intellectuals to his close associates, aides, and even the Catholic Church. He made it criminal to practice Western medicine, or get private education. If your name was John, Judith, or Susan, you could get killed or land in prison because it was criminal to bear Western names. One of the most horrific stories about this man was that on Christmas Eve of 1975, he had more than 150 of his opponents killed. Their execution was carried out by soldiers who dressed in Santa Claus outfits and fired on the men in a football stadium at Malabo. Some immigrants from Nigeria were also killed by his thugs for demanding for higher wages from the cocoa plantation where they were. While he continued to terrorize freely, he was also growing a great sense of paranoia, but his violence only got worse. By 1977, it was estimated that as much as one-third of the country had either found their way out or they were killed by Nguema. Among those who were killed were members of his party and ministers from his government. He also murdered the economy of the country, tumbling the country's per capita income from around $1,420 in 1968 to around $70 in 1975. Towards the end of the 1970s, Francisco had only but few friends left, and he knew his end was drawing very close and fast. And so, he turned to another dictatorial nation, North Korea, for help. He sent his wife and four kids there, while he remained in Equatorial Guinea, to try and see if he could hold on to power for much longer. It was a bad gamble for the dictator, as the last surviving group of loyalists he had caved in after he carried out an execution of some of his family members for various reasons. It was clear to everyone close to him that the man had no regards for friends, family, or loyalty. On the 3rd of August, 1979, one of the craziest dictators in Africa gave way when Francisco Nguema was overthrown by his nephew, Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo, whose brother was also killed by Francisco. The coup was simple and successful, as there was no opposition from the military. When he realized his time was up, he threw a last punch at Equatorial Guinea in revenge. He did this by burning a better part of the country's cash reserve, which was claimed to be around $100 million, before escaping to the jungle of Roy Mooney with $4 million in cash. He was found by an old woman, tired and eating sugar cane, and then he was arrested. On September 29, 1979, he was sentenced to death 101 times. He was summarily killed alongside six others by a hired Moroccan army firing squad at Black Beach Prison at 6 p.m. on the same day. No soldier from the country agreed to do the killing, which was why the Moroccan soldiers were hired. The story of Francis Nguema and the man who took after him is simply the fall of a dictator and the rise of another dictator. This is because the end of Francisco 
only led to Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo, who is now another dictator feared by the nation. Did you find this video interesting? Do you know of other dictators worse than Francisco Nguema? Let us know in the comment section. Do not forget to like, comment and subscribe for more.